You want to see me play two SpongeBob games? You want to see me do it again? At this point in the SpongeBob SquarePants video game franchise, things are actually looking pretty good. Yeah, if you really dive into the nitty gritty of things and check every single title, it's still a disaster. These are licensed games after all. But the one-two punch of Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie game shows that, in the right hands, we can get some really quality stuff from this little sponge that lives in a pineapple under the sea. I still can't believe what Mrs. Puff looks like in the original Game Boy Color game. Ma'am, are you going to be okay? So today on our continued escapades throughout the world of Bikini Bottom, we have a double header here, SpongeBob Truth or Square and Creature from the Krusty Krab, two highly requested games in the series. These aren't the two games that directly followed the movie game, however, in the grand pantheon that is Sponge video game software, these are the only other two that follow a similar trend. That's right, we have two more 3D platformers. I am too far down this rabbit hole, dude. I played Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie game, and my brain was like, you like SpongeBob games, don't you, Ant Dude? And I have never been the same since. Initially, these two may not seem all that special, but relative to the previous two successes, things do get a bit more interesting. 2009's Truther Square saw the return of Heavy Iron Studios, the same company responsible for Battle for Bikini Bottom, the movie game, and after those, a handful of titles based on Pixar films, as well as UFC Personal Trainer right after Truther Square. Boy, that's... what? As for 2006's Creature from the Krusty Krab, made not by Heavy Iron Studios, the only real claim to fame for this one was that it was a launch title for the Wii, since Nintendo apparently showed a lot of interest in using SpongeBob to push their new console. It even got a spotlight at Nintendo's E3 2006 press conference. What a badge of honor, I guess. Oh no, wait. Breacher from the Krusty Carb. Um, whoops. Oh, and yeah, I'll be playing both games on the Wii today, but believe me, I've heard all the warnings you guys have been giving me about doing so. Truth or Square does have an HD version, but I don't own an Xbox 360. But let's be real here, if I wasn't gonna buy one for Sonic Unleashed, I certainly wasn't gonna buy one for SpongeBob, are you kidding me? At least Sonic Unleashed would end up being playable on an Xbox One, and at this point, SpongeBob can't. So, don't complain to me, complain to Microsoft. Otherwise, though, it's the same game, so that's nice. And besides, on the Wii, we can still use a normal controller. Creature from the Krusty Krab, on the other hand, has mandatory motion controls. And hey, if my man Reggie can get behind it, then so can I. We'll cross this bridge when we get to it. There are also some portable versions of these games out there, but that might be for another time. Although Truth or Square is also on the PSP, and it's like the same exact game there, so that's pretty cool, but the other games... That's a whole other bag of Alaskan bullworms. It did release later, but considering this is technically the end of the Heavy Iron SpongeBob trilogy, let's start off with Truth or Square and put a bookend on the story that Battle for Bikini Bottom started. It's the anniversary of the Krusty Krab, and it is time to party. Amidst all of the preparations, Mr. Krabs entrusts the Krabby Patty secret formula to SpongeBob. Bad idea. He's gonna immediately forget where he put it, isn't he? Patrick. Where did I put the formula? We could have prevented this! Here's where Plankton comes in to save the day, offering to conduct experiments on our spongy hero to poke through his brain so he can remember where he put that slip of paper. Thanks to all of these micro robots being inserted into his mind and all of his friends getting really awfully nostalgic, SpongeBob travels through a bunch of happy memories in hopes of remembering where he put the formula. And considering we literally just saw him put it in his back pocket in the opening cutscene, I got a sneaking suspicion I can see the ending coming from a mile away. The premise is kind of similar to the animated special of the same name, but the whole going through memories thing in the game is an excuse to reference a bunch of episodes from the early years of the cartoon, which isn't what happens in the animated special. Jellyfishing with Patrick, working the 24 hour shift being afraid of the hash slinging slasher, Squidward getting obsessed with the Krabby Patties and getting super thick. It is a love letter to the old school fans of SpongeBob. It does take a few creative liberties with how the actual events took place, but hey, the sentiment is still nice. And anyway, the simple concept of a video game clip show is pretty cool, especially with as many iconic moments from the cartoon as this one, which ends up being a big shame because the game itself? Eh? 
First off, like the entire soundtrack is reused from Battle for Bikini Bottom. Level one, Jellyfish Fields, uses the same music as level one, Jellyfish Fields. I couldn't pick out a single music track that was original. Battle for Bikini Bottom soundtrack was fine and all, you know, it certainly helps that the game was also really good, but considering the whole idea behind Truth or Square is calling back to older SpongeBob episodes on top of having older music, it doesn't really give this game a strong identity. And that would be fine if the rest of the game was strong enough to compensate for it, but sadly, that's also not the case. Stages are super linear, there's no room to explore here. You point pointed in the right direction at all times, there are some enemies or slight puzzles along the way, some big battles to finish the stages off. On paper, it's not too dissimilar from the movie game, but there was next to no variety here to keep things interesting. The movie game was also linear, but stages were a lot larger, there were these sliding and driving levels to break up the platforming, and there were plenty of side challenges to tackle as well. Here in Truth or Square, most of the stages play off exactly the same and it makes things pretty boring and monotonous. You walk in a straight line, you mash the attack button a bunch to deal with the enemies, you get told where to go endlessly even though the levels are still mostly straight lines, so just let me figure this out for myself game. It's just… nothing interesting happens and it's very disappointing. Until Spongebob gets fat. I guess the main gameplay element that's trying to keep things exciting are the power-ups. You'll often run into an item that powers you up for either a time limit or until you take damage. They not only allow you to deal with the overload of enemies that get thrown at you a whole lot easier, but they're also the only way you gain control of characters that the previous games gave a lot more time and attention to. So. It simply feels like a downgrade. There's no dedicated Patrick or Sandy gameplay to allow for different styles of challenges. You just play as Spongebob, except for the times you play as someone else for like five seconds just to go on a rampage. At least we can play as Squidward though, so you know that's more than we can say for the last two games. That, that's a bullet point on the back of the box, I guess. Oh wait, it turns out there actually are extras to go for. However, to access them, you have to go back to a stage after it's already completed. Why are we introducing backtracking to linear levels? Just to pad the game out some more? <laughs> I mean, I guess so, because the game otherwise is less than three hours long. Less than 180 minutes from the title screen, there's the credits. At the end, you take down a huge plankton robot. SpongeBob remembers he kept the formula in his back pocket the whole time. Called it. And it turns out, that's not even the formula. Mr. Krabs had it in his pocket the whole time, but he forgot about it. And the last three hours of my life feel relatively wasted. But at least we can get a few costumes, so hey, that's... Yeah, I got nothing. SpongeBob SquarePants Truth or Square isn't bad, but it's boring and uninspired. It sucks because the premise is still really cool. Heavy Iron Studios may have been involved, but it is not the same team we wanted it to be. On the bright side though, the in-game cutscenes are pretty nice, you know, the lip syncing and the animation, totally on point here. A lot better than the stock animations of the previous games. And even rehydrated when I think about it, the models are nicer for sure, but Truth or Square is definitely a whole lot more animated. Jiggle me handle, SpongeBob! No, I'm good. Thank you for the offer though. So yeah, I guess there's a reason why Truth or Square is never in the same conversation as Battle for Bikini Bottom or the movie game, despite being done by Heavy Iron Studios. But I mean, again, if you take a look at their entire lineup, it's really unremarkable, so it's not a huge surprise. The fact that they worked on a game called Fat City is the best thing that they've ever done. That name is amazing. I don't know if it's licensed or whatever, but Fat City. Oh man, Fat City, just a city full of fat. Maybe Breacher from the Krusty Carb is gonna be better. Sure, there are motion controls in a Wii launch title, it's worth being terrified over them, but maybe with a new developer at the helm, Blitz Games, we can expect a fresher take on the franchise. The Wii banner is shockingly bare bones, and man, hyping myself up is gonna blow up right in my face, isn't it? The story begins with our heroes in the middle of sleeping. SpongeBob's bed turns into a car, he revs off into the distance, and it looks like we're gonna race. Excuse me, you want to run that back? I feel like I just went blind. Yeah, sure. Okay, SpongeBob is absolutely horrifying now. Thankfully, we only see him from the back during the race. That's nice. You stare at this for too long and you'll turn to stone. Pisted Patrick! Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. I like to imagine all of these young SpongeBob fans getting a fancy new Nintendo Wii and a new Sponge game for Christmas, greeted to this. Man, I really feel sorry for them. Oh, and uh, real quick, do you want to see Mrs. Puff in a really tight-fitting corset? I had to see it. 
so you all had to see it as well. Honestly, the game's premise is pretty weird. There's like no overarching story for the most part. At least nothing is told to you outright. SpongeBob, Patrick, and Plankton are all in the middle of dreaming. Each one tells their own little mini story, and then you kind of just piece everything together from that knowledge. SpongeBob, after a few races, drives into an abyss, which turns out to be the Alaskan Bullworm, which is where we find Old Man Jenkins and his airplane that we use to escape from it. Meanwhile, Patrick is the superhero Starfish Man in pursuit of the evil dreaded Patrick, which eventually leads him into an evil space layer to destroy an evil UFO, and once the evil deed is done, he returns to Earth. And then we have Plankton. Well, he's evil, of course, and wants to take over the world. That's about what I expected. This time, though, after escaping from a huge Krabby Patty, he turns very large. Yeah, why not? It's his dream. Makes sense. But yeah, that's kind of everything that happens. There's no real major plot point that ties everything together aside from things are just happening. But the real interesting thing is all of these dreams end up coming together at the very end somehow for a big final encounter in which the box art has been inadvertently spoiling this entire time. Whoops. That's kind of fascinating, I guess. It makes absolutely no sense, but sure. It's like SpongeBob is taking a cue from a classic Square Enix RPG. That's a very bold move. Except when you take down Plankton, that's not the end. There's one more race segment where you can either play as SpongeBob or if you collect enough trinkets throughout the adventure, Patrick or Plankton. And then after that one race, which is not difficult in the slightest and has no bearing on the story whatsoever, then the credits roll. What? Oh, and it turns out that Gary was actually dreaming all of the other dreams the whole time. Oh my god. And then SpongeBob dies. At least in Truth or Square, there was a plot that tied everything together. The stages may have been telling individual stories, but there was still an overarching narrative that made sense. Maybe to Creature from the Krusty Krab's credit, it's kinda nice that every single stage does do something different, but rather than feeling like there's a whole lot of well thought out variety here, it more so comes off as the game has absolutely no idea what it wants to do. You got platforming, combat, racing, side scrolling, on rails airplane segments, causing mayhem with giant plankton, random minigames that kinda pop out out of nowhere all the time that oftentimes have absolutely nothing to do with what you were just doing before them. Creature from the Krusty Krab does do a lot of things, but it doesn't do any of those things necessarily well. I guess I could argue it's kind of a better approach to just playing as Spongebob in Truth or Square, but neither of these approaches really leave that much of an impression. Like the very first thing you do is a race, but there's no opponents, so you just keep driving until the course ends. Oh, but even when opponents do start popping up, it's still just a matter of getting to the end. You're not actually racing anybody. As if if the main challenge is to simply stay awake. Oh, maybe that's why the main gimmick is dreams. Oh, and yeah, that's right. We got motion controls on top of all that to deal with. Again, we got the Wii version here. For all of the driving stuff, it's fine. You know, you tilt the Wii remote to lean in the direction you want. That makes sense. But once we get to the platforming and the combat, the special attacks are performed by shaking the nunchuck. Oh God, why? Oh, and in case you were wondering, yeah, it barely works half the time, so. That's cool. All right, we gotta turn this winch to open the door, hold the Wii remote vertically, and move it round in the air. Got it. The motion controls of the Wii version can be very hit or miss. Why the hell are you playing the Wii version of Creature from the Krusty Krab? I wish you good luck for playing the Wii version. Oh God, not the Wii version. Three hours later. Fine. All right, Creature from the Krusty Krab, GameCube edition. Let me just see something real quick and uh... Okay, good. It's normal. I'm still gonna stick to a full playthrough of the Wii version just for morbid curiosity, but it's at least good to know that there is a normal version of the game under all of this garbage. Perhaps the game is simply too linear for my liking. I know plenty of people out there are super nostalgic for this one, but this is my very first time. And I don't know, man. 
it's not great. Nothing in the adventure is particularly challenging. The level of hand-holding going on, constantly pulling you towards the next path is kind of ridiculous. And some of the stages go on for way too long. Things just drag on for no real reason. Some of the concepts here are admittedly pretty cool, but the gameplay is not strong enough to match that potential. Sure, Truth or Square wasn't all that exciting either, but you at least had some more tools in your arsenal to make the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay just a touch more interesting. In Creature from the Cross, Crab, while the platforming is decent, the combat's okay, more so in the not Wii versions, and everything else, it's a total crapshoot. There's an objective screen on the pause menu? Why? You only ever do one thing at a time. You know, I take back what I said earlier, saying this is a platformer really wouldn't be accurate. It is a story-based minigame collection, with a couple obnoxiously long platforming stages sprinkled about. And with that understanding, I guess some of the gameplay becomes more inoffensive for the younger players out there, but we are clearly going further and further away from what made Spongebob games so interesting in the first place. I do like this dude, though. This guy's alright by me. What the? There's a music mode? You pick an instrument, each one has unique controls to play the notes. Oh my god, Spongebob did Wii Music before Wii Music. That's incredible. Okay, you know what? This is honestly the most fun I got out of this entire game. The harmonica, this is my favorite one. You can play a whole range of notes by inputting a bunch of different button combinations. It's pretty cool. You can actually make some recognizable music. I guess, if anything, check out Truth or Square. I enjoyed this one a little bit more. The box art is absolutely terrifying, and it's also on Xbox 360, so if you want some easy achievements, that'll be the way to go. But even on the PSP, the entire game is on that console as well. So if you want to take SpongeBob and put him in your pants, you can do that? All right, so we're like five games down and about two dozen more to go. I really got to start picking up the pace on these. Stay tuned. I got a lot of cool stuff planned that you're not going to want to miss. Until then, though, I'm going to go take a nap. And if my body just starts to turn into this horrendous form, I'll let you guys know, but keep me in your thoughts. Jiggle me handle, SpongeBob. Oh, that's disgusting.